Morning everyone. I'm Stephen Holland and along with my wife Karen with Pastors, Core Officers of Salvation Army Chad in Montana. I'd just like to welcome you here on our second Advent, December 5th. Our Advent reading this morning is about preparing. In Isaiah 43 to 5 it says, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight the desert, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rough places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And that's our reading for Advent this morning. Now one of the things I want to talk about is this Christmas season, obviously. I want to, and I also want to mention this. Are you a pessimist or a realist? Are you a pessimist or a realist? Personally, I think I'm a realist, which means I think I'm extremely practical. And I generally approach life with a realistic attitude. I approach things by keeping my expectations low. Now, here's what I mean. I enjoy relationships and special moments and opportunities, but I always have some measured expectation for each situation. I will look at all the options before I decide something, and I think about all the things that might go wrong beforehand. But whatever I am, Christmas is one of those times where I keep my expectations low. Now, if you were here last week, you remember, remember that I talked about what Christmas was like when I was a child. And like all children, I was excited for Christmas morning to arrive. And there was a there was big buildup. And then Christmas morning comes and gifts are open and it's all over. And then the next day is Boxing Day and all the magic of Christmas is gone. Gone for another year. And as an adult, I don't get into the excitement of Christmas. So at Christmas, I tend to keep my expectations low. But no matter what Christmas looks like for us, I think we overlook one area where we can seem to have low expectations during the year, and that's with God. Which is weird, because Christmas is supposed to be centered around the birth of Jesus. Yet for some of us, Christmas can have a way of amplifying our disappointment with Him, our disappointment with God. Sure, we celebrate our faith during the season, but our faith can be at a low point. Sure, we sing songs of hope and love and joy and peace, but maybe there's a part of us that doesn't feel it, or at least feel a lot of it. We can have low expectations of God, and maybe the reason is because He never seems to do what we expect of Him. And when that happens, the only thing we feel is disappointment. We have a certain expectation of him, but really the reality is sometimes that doesn't meet our expectation. Now does that make sense to you? But God not meeting our expectations isn't something new. Throughout history, people have struggled to reconcile their expectations with an unpredictable God. And nowhere is this more dynamic and apparent than during the very first Christmas. The story unfolded in a way that met no one's expectation, including Jesus' parents. In fact, this story happened in a way that defied the expectations of every person waiting for God's arrival. So let's look at how this story began. Luke 1, 26-33 says this, We know God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are going to call him Jesus. And he will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. So to summarize, an ordinary Jewish girl learned from an angel that she was going to give birth to the Son of God. The eternal, almighty, all-powerful God was going to arrive in the form of a baby born to a virgin. Now who in their right mind was expecting this? And I'm sure this didn't meet the expectations of Mary or anybody else. After all, Mary had assumed she would get married and then start a family. But no, God had another plan in mind. Now let's look at Joseph's experience with this news. Matthew 1, 18-21. 
Jesus' mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant with the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and it did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he was going to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you're going to give him the name Jesus, because he will save people from their sins. So Joseph learned that his soon-to-be wife was already pregnant, and regardless of the reason, this was considered scandalous in their culture. And Joseph had assumed that his courtship, marriage, and family would be unfolded in a certain way and meet the expectations that was culturally appropriate. But nope, God had another plan in mind. Then here's how the birth of Jesus took place in Luke 2, 1, 3 to 7. At that time in the Roman Empire, Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire and all returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, in Judea, and David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him his wife, Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. And she gave birth to her first son. She wrapped him in uh, snuggly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. For hundreds of years, the Jewish people had waited and hoped for the promised Messiah. They were expecting God to show up in a powerful way and deliver them from the oppressive Roman, Roman rule. But instead of a warrior king, they got a helpless baby, born to an unwed teenage mother. And instead of being born in a palace, he was born in a barn for animals. Clearly, a mistake must have been made. Their expectations were not met. You see, God had another plan in mind. In every moment, God wasn't doing what people expected him to do. Hundreds of years had passed since the prophet, any prophet, had recorded any, any communication from God. There were no signs of being freed from the emperor, empire that ruled them. And from the way things looked, some people might have wondered if God even cared about them anymore let alone that he was going to do anything on their behalf. It seemed by all outward appearances that God was nowhere to be found. Their expectations were at an extremely low level. But here's the thing about expectations people have or had about God. It turns out they missed that one expectation that mattered most. You see, it wasn't that God let them down, which would have made him unreliable, uncaring, and not worth following. Instead, because they were focusing on what God did or did not do, they had missed who he is. And because the view of God was off, they expected something completely different than what God had always had and planned. And who is God? And what is God like? Well, let's look again at what the angels told Joseph in his dream. She will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he shall save the people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet and what, that says, Look, the virgin will conceive a son, a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. History tells us that the Jewish people expected a warrior, a ruler, someone who would bring justice, someone who would take charge. But they were disappointed because the reality did not meet their expectations. But the truth is, they got something far better. They got a God who was with them, not in a palace like a king, but in a place for animals. In other words, he wasn't out of reach. He was accessible and an approachable God. God is with us, it says. This was an idea that they weren't expecting, but it was an idea and a truth and a reality that changed everything. God is with us means no matter what, we are never alone. No matter our behavior, no matter our good days or bad days, no matter our family situation or financial status, no matter what we've done, both good or bad, no matter what, God is with us. Ultimately, Jesus would defy all expectations by dying on the cross and coming back to life and sending his Holy Spirit to be with us forever. 
And today, that Spirit of God lives in each one of us, and we are never alone, because God is with us. Now just think about that truth. God is with us. When we really understand all that involves, it changes everything. It means more. No matter our reality, God is with us. He is with you and I. Our family may seem dysfunctional, but God is with us. Our marriages or dating relationships may not be what they, we want them to be, but God is with us. We may be struggling in our jobs, trying to move to the next phase of our career, but God is with us. We may be scared about what's going to happen in the world, but God is with us. We may be facing sickness or financial problems or whatever, but God is with us. We may have had a loved one die, but God is with us. In other words, we are not alone in this. We don't have to figure it out our lives, ourselves, our fears, our doubts, and our worries. We don't have to figure them out all alone. We have God with us. Jesus has changed the way we see God. He gave us a new way to understand and relate to him. In fact, in the book of John, Jesus says this about himself, I am the light of the world. So in this season of lights, Jesus shines as the brightest light of all because his light shows us the character of God. And to know God's character, we only need to look at Jesus. It is through him, through his light, we see that God is compassionate, loving, forgiving, committed, patient. And most of all, that he is with us. So God may not meet our personal expectations, but we know that he is with us no matter what. This holiday season, remember that because of Jesus' birth in the manger and his eventual death on the cross, we'll never be apart from God. He is always with us. No matter our circumstances in our life, no matter what we face, he is with us. So even when the holidays get messy, even when things don't look very good, and the new year of 2020, 2022 is coming, and this new Omicron virus is being blasted over the news. Remember that God is with us. Remember that at the center of all of it, we are celebrating the true gift of Jesus' birth, that he is now always with us, and he'll be with us forever. And I pray he's with you this morning. I thank you for listening to me. And I hope you are having uh, good plans as you move up to the Christmas season. And I hope that uh, things are going well for you. Let me say a prayer for you. Father God, I just pray for the people listening that they may experience you in a new way. That they may come to understand that you are with them no matter what they are facing. Fill us now with your love. And as we get close to Christmas, celebrating the birth of your son, who eventually gives us life on the cross for us. We ask that you help us to understand our relationship with you, that no matter what we're going through, you are there for us. I thank you for all those who are listening. And I just ask you to bless them all. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now may God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace, hope, and grace, and love, and uh, all those things that you need in your life. And may he meet your expectations that he is with you each and every moment of the day. Thank you for joining me. Until next week, have a Merry Christmas and uh, keep looking up around and at all the things that God has given you in your life. God bless.